This is I'm Stark, and in this video we will be looking at the role of religion in the reign of Henry VII. So first of all, it's important to understand how significant religion was, as it was so central to the lives of all Englishmen. Now it earned a third of all land and it also had a considerable amount of money. Now it also had its own legal system and um, it was under the leadership of the Pope in Rome. Now the Pope rarely interfered with Henry VII, um, however, because he did have a larger focus in the Papal States, however he could have if he wanted to. So many churchmen were also extremely powerful and influential because of their high position in politics. And people like this included Richard Fox and John Morton, who I talked about when I talked about government in the previous video. Now bishops and abbots were also members of the House of Lords and some officers of states were completely clergymen and the clergymen are like the priests and people involved in church. Now these religious leaders often had legal training and were highly competent at skills so when we talk later in Henry VIII about Cardinal Wolsey we will see this a lot more. So, to understand about religion, we need to know the beliefs of the Catholic Church, which was the main church and which the majority of England followed. And the Pope was the head of this church and was recognised as the court of law. So the Bible was written in Latin in those days, so it would be limited to priests and only those who could read the language, so highly educated people, and priests were simply interpreted to commoners. Now, the central religious experience was the Holy Communion, also known as the Eucharist. And here the bread and the wine was consecrated, which means it was made holy, and it was transformed into the body and blood of Jesus. Now, this is called transubstantiation. Now, transubstantiation is something that you'll learn a lot more about the Tudor times, as it was a significant point of some people believed in it, and some people didn't, and it was often debated. So mass was ex extremely important because it was performed by a priest and the whole community took part. And for people who were sold to be saved, they had to go to church regularly, show their faith in God and believe in the sacraments. And the sacraments were baptism, which was welcoming a newborn into the world, confirmation, which was making the transition into adulthood, marriage is where two individuals pledge themselves to each other, Anointing of the sick is preparing the dying for the next new world. Uh, penance is the in where an individual would seek uh, God's forgiveness for their sins. Holy orders is where the priest is empowered to deliver these sacraments. And a Eucharist is where church members, as I mentioned before, receive the blood and um, body of Jesus. So the church was also important in everyday social roles and it wasn't just these big um, Catholic churches. And parish churches was one of the main um, thing in which there were around 8,000 um, in England. Um, and this would have been a very impressive building in relation to the rest of the town. So these parish churches hosted festivals um, and days such as bank holidays and um, the voluntary associations also offered charity. Now chantries were also an extremely important part of the community and chantries were chapels where masses were said for the souls of the dead um, and now these were often financed by benefactors who were people who made charitable donations. Um, so many of these par uh, parishes were also able to earn money from things such as ale festivals. But pilgr uh, pilgrimages were another way in which the church dominated social events and in order to gain time of purgatory, which is another very Catholic belief as we all learn about, um, the individual will, may um, visit the tomb of a saint like um, Thomas Beckett for example or a shrine built on one of the visitations of the Virgin Mary. And simple pilgrimages would simply just occur around parish churches. However, as good as all of this sounds, there were some faults with the church because of corruption. And some um, clergy could have been absent while they still um, asked for payment. Some were immoral and had mistresses, which was obviously um, not allowed, especially as many had to say celibate. And some were ignorant to much of a religion. But... As we talk about, and I hope has uh, come a big theme, that how religion was imp extremely important, there were many 
religious organisations around England as well. And these include monks, friars and nunneries. And 1% of the adult population were monks and these people lived in monasteries in a religious community. Now the most common, um, common uh, type of monks was the Benedictines, yet yeah, there were also Cistercians and Carthusians, which were situated in more remote areas. Now friars were also another thing which were um, a religious organisation, and they were founded by donations by the community. And although they had lost some popularity um, since the Tudors, they were more popular before the Tudors, they still gained some money from, um, from wills of people. And they worked alongside the lay people, which is essentially the normal people. Now, nunneries gained a lot less prestige than both monks and friars because it was mostly consisted of women who were deemed unsuitable for marriage. So this meant they were extremely poor and many women just entered as a last resort. So for, throughout this video we've talked mostly about the successes of the church and how it's useful. However there were also problems and the two things are Lollards and Humanists. Now Lollardy was founded by John Wycliffe and this offered opposition to the church in Henry VII's rule. So they thought that the Bible should be translated into English and they were sceptical of many Catholic beliefs such as transubstantiation and the Eucharist. Now they also thought that the Catholic Church was corrupt. So these Lollards were considered heretics but after the failed Lollard uprising in 1414 uh, Lollards became fewer in number and the criticism in the church was fairly rare in Henry the Seventh's reign. This will completely change when we start to talk about Henry the Eighth. Now humanists were another thing which were critical of the church but not as big a threat as Lollards. Um, and humanists were influential in education yet they did also affect religion. And they believed that parish churches were of poor quality and they wanted to improve the quality of education among the clergy and the laity. Uh, they also condemned the way in which the church, church earned money by selling indulgences, which is where the rich could pay for the cancellation of purgatory. So they ensured that the translations of the Bible into Latin and Greek were done to a high standard. And one of the most famous humanists was Erasmus. And Erasmus dis detested the misuse of wealth within the church and the corruption of the clergy. So humanism was, however, of limited influence in England in Henry VII's reign. It was of more influence around uh, the rest of Europe, but the real changes and church will suddenly start being criticised a lot more as we go into um, Henry VIII's reign and then Edward's reign, um, Mary's reign and Elizabeth's reign because a religion is a, a really pivotal theme in the Tudors throughout. So thank you for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you soon.